All right, everyone, good evening. Today is Monday, November 9th, and let's run through the market news of the day. To kick things off, let's talk about equity markets. We saw huge rises across the board as the day started on the news of a Pfizer vaccine. This is huge. Pfizer and BioNTech SE's vaccine will protect most people from COVID-19, obviously the biggest thing affecting our world right now. Um, with effectiveness for the first vaccines, previously only expected to range between 60 and 70%, this vaccine had a whopping performance of 90% in the trial data. This is known as being just extraordinary, according to Anthony Fauci, one of the preeminent experts on infectious diseases here in the U.S. Pfizer shares rose as much as 15% during the day and ended up closing up about 8% on the news. BioNTech is not traded in the US, however, its American depository receipts surged as much as 24% on the news. So huge moves there. Um, in addition, it's widely expected that frontline medical personnel, essential workers in at-risk groups are going to receive whatever shot is authorized first. However, this is not known. They were contracted for a $2 billion deal to supply 100 million doses to the United States. This also comes with an option for 500 million more. They're the only vaccine among front runners that did not get funding from the US government's um, Operation Warp Speed program, which is pretty interesting. However, BioNTech did take 445 million US dollars, or the equivalent of which in euros, from the German government as grant funding. Moderna's vaccine also uses this mRNA uh, methodology. However, this has never been used in medicine before, but is likely to be very effective for this specific vaccine. Uh, they are being tested in two dose regimens and the trial started in July. So only a few people have received the second dose, which is what this data is coming from. So the total participants we're actually drawing these conclusions from is a mere 92 people, which is a little bit concerning if you think of that kind of determining the fate of the world. But hopefully more data will come out before it gets authorized, which could happen as early as the end of November. However, um, President-elect Biden did say at a press conference today that he expects a dark winter ahead of a bright future once he takes office in late January. Um, so all this is great. However, we are here to talk about the effect on the financial markets. So let's do just that. Firstly, the S&P 500 was up about 1.3% on this news, and the 10-year Treasury uh, rose in yield, so fell in price, to get to a yield of about 92 basis points. This is about a 10 basis point jump. And one of the biggest drivers for this is the election of President-elect Biden. Um, being blue, he does have tendencies to pursue increased fiscal stimulus. And there is still the question of the Senate composition, which we'll get to in a second. If the Senate does go blue, and we are currently at a 48-48 split with four votes undecided or four members um, rather undecided at the moment, we'll see um, that 10-year yield proceed to rise even further. So a um, couple other markets, things to talk about. Oil spiked on hope for demand increase, again, because of this vaccine. WTI is back above $41 a barrel, and this put it up about 10%. Brent was up nearly 12% on the news, rising to $43. City has a price target on WTI now at $49 a barrel. Uh, oil prices were also supported by the trend of a weakening U.S. dollar, which is one of the reasons we've seen the emergence of a carry trade out of U.S. dollars into higher yielding assets in other currencies recently, particularly into emerging markets. Also, um, not surprisingly, the dollars weakened on Joe Biden's election victory. This has boosted appetite for riskier assets and removed the uncertainty of the election from the market. Corporate credit markets have also surged as US tech stocks have emerged as clear winners from the election. RMB has seen bullish moves across the board with offshore rates up about one and a half percent 
last week alone to form its biggest rally in a year going to 659 that is on the offshore less tightly regulated rate also in currencies we saw the lira rebound on erdogan's son-in-law's retirement um, from the finance ministry for health reasons which were left unspecified um, but that did allow the lira to rebound. Bringing back to oil before we do move on, just wanted to touch on Saudi Arabia. They have supported proposals for higher oil prices and look like they might lead the OPEC plus coalition to make a couple changes. Saudi Arabia jawboned oil prices higher um, as their energy minister, Prince al Wahaz bin Salman, said that the current deal could be tweaked within the counterparties of OPEC plus. And this um, does indicate that oil prices might rise. A lot of the economies in the region are incredibly dependent on oil prices and fund themselves basically based on their oil supply. All right, moving on, let's talk about the election in a bit more detail. Biden is now the president elect as announced by the Associated Press this past Saturday. Current President Trump, however, still refuses to concede the election, and many of his aides have recently contracted the coronavirus, including the Secretary of the HUD. Trump and family members are also uh, publicly questioning the timing of the vaccine following the election and have posed questions on if um, having this vaccine out possibly last week would have affected his re-election chances. We will never know. However, that is a question and a card that they enjoy playing right now. Um, as previously noted on the top right of your screen, you see the Senate results, which are tied at 48-48 with uh, four seats currently in question. Senate is up for grabs and will determine if a blue wave does happen. Um, this is something that financial markets have not surprisingly been on the lookout for. Uh, in other political news, Mark Esper was also fired today. All right, um, this was from Friday. We can touch on this just as a summary. Uh, to bring it back in, we see that the jobless rate was down about 6.9%. Payrolls were up 630,000 and long-term unemployments were up about 1.1 million. Uh, people. So that number is to the mid three millions to the mid three and a half millions right now. So we see um, that as particularly being a point of concern, despite improvement across the board in the headline numbers, particularly those with women employment. All right, so general stories to touch on. We see that there are five things we want to talk about. Firstly, three pieces of m a activity vf acquired supreme or rather announced the acquisition of supreme this is a generation z cult favorite brand they acquired from carlisle for 2.1 billion us dollars vf jumped the most in 33 years up 17 percent and the stock has been down about 30 percent this year compared to spx retail select being up 17 percent this is the biggest acquisition since uh, buying Timberland for 2.3 billion US dollars in 2011. VF is the parent company of many popular apparel brands that oftentimes also see themselves as a lifestyle brand. So this includes brands like Vans and North Face. And a VF has acknowledged that this transaction will likely be modestly accretive to both revenue and earnings per share. Um, they're likely to represent about 500 million US dollars in revenue and will add about 20 cents to the adjusted earnings per share. Carlisle is likely to cash out in a very impressive fashion here as they paid a mere 500 million in 2017 for about a 50% stake in the entity. However, their investment would just about double with the latest transaction, which is very impressive. This deal fits within VF's culture, and Morgan Stanley was the advisor that provided the fairness opinion to VF. All right, moving on. Adobe's acquisition of Workfront was announced today. This is a 1.5 billion US dollar deal and aims to add collaboration to the Adobe platforms. The deal is expected to close sometime from December 2020, uh, December 2020 to February 2021, 
And Workfront has about 3,000 corporate customers, um, including 1,000 that are mutual and about a million users in total. So it's a pretty big platform. Um, it's focused on marketers who use the software to both manage content and plan and track marketing campaigns. Um, this allows them to manage their workflow across teams through this process. They have generated about 200 million in revenue in their last full year that was recorded, which was in 2018. And they have raised about $100 million in funding to date, according to a VC website, PitchBook. W Capital Partners, Susquehanna Growth Equity, and Alliance Bernstein's AV Private Credit Investors have acquired a minority stake in the company after buying out some of, the, some of its investors for about $280 million. They're also backed by companies including OpenView, Greenspring Associates, and JMI uh, Equity. Adobe fell nearly 5% on the news. However, they are up about 48% this year and closed at $471 a share. Um, this will be Adobe's fifth biggest acquisition, assuming it is completed. All right, moving on. Lowe's is said to be in talks to acquire a company called HD Supply. Uh, this was a company that used to be owned by the rival Home Depot and was sold to the company's private equity firms in 2007. They took it public about six years later and um, it has about 500,000 customers across 270 branches in 44 distribution centers, according to its last published annual report. Um, Lowe's, similar to Home Depot, has been doing impressively well and essentially thriving during the pandemic, as since people are spending more time at home, they're more eager to improve their home environment. Lowe's had approached HG Supply, but is unclear whether HG Supply is talking to other suitors, and Lowe's did not publicly announce that they are planning to proceed with any deal whatsoever yet. HG Supply gained more than 16% on the news that broke after hours, and Lowe's fell nearly 9% on similar news. All right, two more things to talk about. Beyond Meat plunged about 28% as pantry stockpiling has come to an end. This also comes amid news from McDonald's today that talks about themselves creating their own plant-based burger, um, if I can even call it a burger. So the so uh, shares plunged after missing even the lowest of Wall Street forecasts for Beyond Meat, that is, um, for revenue. They've had eroding restaurant sales and a decline in consumer stockpiling of groceries, seeing that customers are now more comfortable going outside and eating at restaurants. Global sales rose about 3% in the third quarter to 95 million. However, they did have a stark net loss of 28 cents per share. Um, this is in contrast to the lowest analyst estimate at a profit of 5 cents a share. Um, they have continued, despite the disappointing quarter, to provide um, detail of their investment plans and pursue those with full steam ahead, rather than curtailing activities in this transitory macroeconomic environment, they do continue to invest in the next generation and pillars of their future growth. Um, yeah, so this does come in competition to McDonald's new McPlant line and is something to watch there. All right, one more thing to talk about. Australian business confidence. There was a huge jump um, down under with sentiment up about five points in October from negative four just a single month prior. Uh, the conditions index, which measures hiring, sales, and profits, edged up from one, uh, edged up to one rather from zero the month prior. And this shows that central banks' efforts are working with substantial fiscal stimulus released in the government's budget that includes income tax cuts and incentives for businesses to invest and hire. This comes amid another story down under where in New Zealand, the central bank actually holds about 37% of all of their issued um, government debt, which is whopping, seeing that they had a mere 7% of the um, debt that had been issued prior to the start of the pandemic. And this is indicative of huge bond buying programs 
and essentially alludes to the idea of Japanification of the economy. Um, back, going back to Australia, just here for a second, this does continue that the economy, continue to show rather that the economy has rebounded from the sharp fall that was seen globally back in February, March, and April earlier this year. So it looks like we have a story of rebound, which is great to see. Hopefully those deals come through and we'll have more M&A activity to talk about. After all, money is just so cheap right now. So a lot of acquisitions do make sense. Companies do have huge cash balances and are eager to put them to work, essentially just because they can. So with that in mind, look forward to seeing you tomorrow for the 25th edition of Market News Flow. In the meantime, feel free to reach out if you have any questions and stay tuned with the markets. All right, have a good night, everyone.